A new study was just released out of Israel showing that COVID vaccination from Pfizer reduced semen concentrations and total motile counts. So is this true? Is this study accurate or not? In this video, we'll go over all of that. But if you just want a quick summary, here it is. Of men vaccinated with two doses of Pfizer within 75 to 120 days, there was a 15.4% decrease in sperm concentrations and thus a 22.1% reduction in the total motile count of of sperm. That's it. But the details matter, guys. So you really need to watch the rest of this video. Before we begin, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell in the bottom right hand corner so you can be notified when my new videos come out. Also, click my social links in the description below if you want more content like this. I post extra exclusive content on Substack and Patreon if you're interested. Also, I have YouTube memberships now that give you access to more content, so just click the join button above. Anyways, let's get into this. So the first order of business is for me to pull up my new Substack post on this. So one moment, I'm going to scroll down to this summary and highlight it for you. So hold on. Now to explain, this study was a retrospective longitudinal study. Basically, in this case, that means it simply looked back on sperm donors from three different banks to observe sperm concentrations and total motile sperm counts of individuals involved in this study. Okay, so as you could imagine, sperm concentration is potency and motility is the ability of the sperm to move and navigate, which is very important for the fertilization of eggs. After all, if the sperm can't move to an egg, a pregnancy likely won't happen. Now, as you can see right here, these results were measured after two Pfizer doses were administered in order to examine the effect the vaccine may have on the male sexual reproductive cells. Now, let me open the actual paper to explain an important reason. This study was even conducted. Now, I'm going to scroll to page three, four, and we're going to look at paragraph two, hold on. And now I'll highlight this paragraph for you. So this paragraph here, this is explaining how spermatozoa and spermatogonia, which are the precursor to mature sperm cells, express what's called ACE2. So ACE2 is a receptor on many cells in the lung, heart, spermatozoa. And the concern here is that spike protein produced by the body from the vaccine can attach itself to those ACE2 receptors on spermatozoa and spermatogonia and downregulate its function to work properly. Just so we're clear, dysregulation of ACE2 is associated with thrombosis, neural tissue damage and diminished ability of the body to exert a balanced anti-inflammatory effect in order to heal itself appropriately. But there's much more, but we'll stick with that just for now. The concern by the authors is that the vaccine could disrupt normal ACE2 functioning. Now that you understand the concerns and why this study was even done to begin with, I'm going to hop back to page two where it says methods. So hold on one second. Now I'll explain this study in more detail and let me highlight this here. As you can see here, there were 37 SDs, which means sperm donors, who provided 220 sperm samples total from three different donor centers in Israel. Now, you should also know that all participants had to test negative on PCR before vaccination in order to qualify for the study. Now, further down here, if you look, one to three samples per person were collected at each sample time, T0, T1, T2, and T3. Those are just the intervals samples were collected at. So T0 was before vaccination, T1 was 15 to 45 days after vaccination, T2 was collection at 75 to 125 days after the second dose, and T3 was collection at 150 days. This part is important because other studies examining the effect of COVID vaccination on sperm only examined samples before and immediately after vaccination more or less. Whereas this study gives you data before vaccination, but also about five months after vaccination. So anyways, the samples were collected in that fashion. And now we'll talk about the analysis of those samples. So the analysis, processing, and examination of collected sperm samples were based on the WHO's World Health Organization's guidelines. So let me pull up the WHO guidelines on this one second. Now, this is page 238 of 286. And most most of these lower reference limits here, as you can see, or measures,
measurements of semen characteristics are expressed in percentage, right? For instance, when we talked about the results from the study at the very beginning of the video, you know, sperm motility reduced 15.4% and TMC or total motile sperm count decreased 22.1%, you can kind of compare those figures to this WHO chart right here. And the WHO chart shows the lower acceptable limits of those tests. So here on this chart, if you look at motility, anything under 40 is considered abnormal. As you remember, this study showed a 15.4% reduction in total motility. And here, total sperm concentration, anything under 15 is also abnormal. You also remember there was a 22.1% reduction in that from earlier. The problem with this study though, is that it doesn't disclose the raw data. It only shows a relative percentage decrease of sperm concentration and total motility, not the actual number reduction we could use to line up exactly with this WHO chart. Now let me show you this chart in my Substack post that lays out the results. Hold on one sec. This chart lays out the data we just went over. So you can come back to this or screenshot it if you'd like. Finally, let me hop back to the conclusion of this study. Hold on one sec. And if you look here, I'll highlight this. The authors state it is probable the vaccine could be causing a systemic immune response, causing a transient reduction in sperm concentrations and motility. And you know, as a final note, a third dose was given to participants in this study, but data collection stopped after the second dose. So we have no idea how that third dose would impact sperm counts. So what does all this mean? Well, this study is interesting. However, there are some problems. There's no question about that. This data only looked at vaccinated individuals. It would have been better to see unvaccinated people included as a control so you could see the full effect, but you don't always get what you want. <laughs> so also the decline in sperm concentration and motility was only reported as a relative reduction. For example, um, total motile sperm count reduction was explained as a 22.1% reduction. Yeah, well, that's nice, but from what number down to what number is that 22.1% reduction referring to? It's just not specific, you see what I mean? Also, this study was underpowered. There just weren't enough people included. Moving on, because the participants were sperm donors, they're naturally in better overall health as not just anyone can donate sperm. That might not be reflective of the population as a whole. Finally, the data from this study are definitely something to consider because as we've learned, spike protein produced after vaccination or infection has an affinity for those ACE2 receptors on the lungs, heart, and sperm cells. And that's quite clear. And many more cells as well. That said, it's not a stretch to conclude the possibility of an mRNA COVID vaccine altering sperm concentrations or motility. Anyways, those are the facts. We still need more data on this, but if there's anything you'd like to learn about in the future, please leave it in the comments section below, and I'll see you on the next one.